Last time to Star Wars Chronicles Prophesized King. Our heroes start beginning about Darkie's past. As they were starting learning it, the other group took on the giant golem as he was guarding the guarding the place of the circle of life. During the fight, it seemed like it was impossible to ground the giant stone golem. Yet after a bit, they managed to find some way to pass him. I.e. by accident when Sierra decides to go behind them and try to fail at avenge spots. During the fight, David was trying to learn about exactly what he means about preserving his own life and what it really means to view others. And though he thinks he figured it out, there's still more that's left for him to discuss. As they went down, they came face to face with Nemesis, the next of the Dark Council. They managed to block him off, which leads them into a fight as the group finished up the rest of Darkie's past. Episode 31, Teenage Gifts. We are now back within the dense forest of Romania. The mysterious masked man had Bartholomew follow him deeper and deeper within. Fog appeared thicker by the minute as they went deeper. Where are you taking me? The masked man stopped as he let go of his hand. He remained responsive as he went a little ahead to check out the area. Is this a part of my training? The masked man looked bad at him with a stern face. I also don't know your name. The man came closer and putting his hand on the boy's shoulder. If you must know, my name is Lavender Norman. Now I said it, it's time to begin. He pushed Rathalian back into a dark hole behind him. Rathalian screamed and reached for his life as he looked at the dead eyes of Lavender. It wasn't too long before he hit the bottom. Despite a lone fall, he only had minor back pains as he slowly got up. As he was rubbing his back, he saw nothing but the empty, dark void around him. He began to back away in shudder and fear before Lavender's voice echoed in the distance. Black magic is a powerful tool. Though it is not an ability like your friend think it is, only certain people can use it. He turned around to see the tall man stand above him. I'm telling you back to waiting further. Though I still don't know what brings it upon someone, perhaps it's some divine force or luck, either way, people like us are drawn to it. Like Obus Moss to a powerful lantern at night. He begins to walk around him sternly. These spells and teachings were discovered in the past of the great darkest Aquinas, the elemental of darkness itself. I used to carry out his wishes before he died, bring the power of black magic all across the known universe. You are one of the ones I happen to meet. But I ain't got up with a little understanding. What is that supposed to mean at the end? But I only felt something gra graze by him. He looked about to see a purple flame burn. It means that you are the next generation of black mages, such as those kids who you saw back at the castle. Why are they even in there in the first place? Let him force the flame back to him only to have it circle around him. People fear what they don't understand. I'm sure you have heard that power. I thought he rubbed his arm embarrassed. He has them held captive to try and understand his power, with little imitation, intention to have them live. He then brings out Martholomew's hands. In the process, he brings the flame to form one little flicker in between them. You will be the key to helping them. I know it, for I have no one else could do what you can, not even myself. Martholomew looks out to see him as the flame goes away. Lavender takes off the mask to reveal an old man with long white hair. You see, time has not been kind to me. He puts it back on sternly. How can I do that? And they'll attack him in the gut. In time, you'll see. Without any further questions, let's begin with your first lesson. Arthalyu gets up back, gets back up while studying him. He sees Lavender finger pointed at him. What do you want? He felt another fire attack him. I said no more questions. Focus, Staronis. Arthalyu gets back up and again to try and figure out what to do. Lavender shot another fireball from his finger towards him. Arthalyu used some sort of force spell to push him out of the way. He smiled as he thought he had it, but that stopped when Lavender controlled the flame with his finger to hit Bartholomew directly. Magic is only limited to the one casting it. Stop trying to limit yourself to the spells you do know. Bartholomew gets back up. That's all I know though. How do you expect me to- He dodged quickly again as another fireball came at him. What did I say? Bartholomew kept dodging the fire over and over again with levitation and four spells, but the fire was relentless. Eventually hit him after a bit of chasing. The reason that's all you know is because you choose to only know that. Look further. Use your magic to its full capabilities to stop my attack. Marthania gets up again while breathing heavily. He looks at the ma magic angrily as he gets into defensive stance. 
The will is fire an arrow one, but instead of casting a force objection spell, he casts a spawn spell to bring water and douse the flame away. He looked away instinctively, but looked back after the felt no fire hit him. In fact, there was no flame whatsoever. He gave a chuckle while with a smile victoriously. However, he felt another flame hit him. I said stop the attack, not the flame itself. The dog just lays there defeated. Come on, get up. There's something else I can do. You just keep attacking me. Lavender seems point to hear that. Is that what you believe? Has it ever once crossed your mind to attack me directly? Yes, and all that would accomplish is you defending yourself as the fire hits me again. You don't know unless you try. But Donya kept laying there defeated. You give up too easy. Have you forgotten what you're doing this for? Lavender spawns a mirror right in front of Bartholomew. Look up to see Jay still hospitalized in the castle. He gets up slowly while putting his hand on the mirror. Tears begin to fall as the mirror went away. If you get up here, it's such as yourself you'll be abandoning. Lavender fired another one. This time, however, Bartholomew dodged it while shooting his own flame towards the mage. Yet all that happened was him getting hit by the boomerang like fire as Lavender, Lavender takes the other and makes it flicker in front of him. He felt the fire in the palm of his hand as Bartholomew looked like he was about to fall. Guess your theory was right. He looked back at the boy in shock as Bartholomew calmed himself. He breathed heavily as he looked at the mage determined. Impressive. Truly impressive. Bartholomew got into another defensive stance without charging his look. Matching his look. The scene flashes back to the castle. A young brown haired man was seen on the throne wearing a war outfit as guards stood beside him. He sat there sternly as day rolled on. There he sees another man in his own war outfit kneeling. Speak now. The older man looked up to him, struggling with his hand on his chest. My King Michael first. I come here reporting from the public outcry. Michael leaned his hand on his hand while sitting. It isn't about that stupid kid again. I swear, what invasion the public goes wild. Just tell them it was a mistake. Some street rat sticking his nose in places he shouldn't be. The old man nodded. Speaking of which, what happens to that kid? His parents keep shouting for his return. I'm sorry, sir, we don't know where he is. His mysterious disappearance is beyond us. Perhaps he really could use black magic after all. I go sat there while thinking. Perhaps, but that shouldn't stop us from finding him. Even after a year since we last saw him. Our world is at a crisis right now. It's bad enough these people think we're getting invaded. If word gets out that one of our very own gets kidnapped by neighboring countries, it could have been a lead that to force my hand. You wouldn't want that to happen, now do we? No, not at all. I'll see to it that he's found one once and for all. Good. Now get to it. The only man nodded as he went out to the leave. Oh, and one more thing. He looks back to his king. When you do find him, make sure he's alive. And if he isn't, say something about the lines of, His death was an unfortunate accident of natural causes. You can do that, right? Hop to it. Yes, sire. The scene then cuts back to the black black wall with Bartholomew and Lavender. Bartholomew seemed a little older as his clothes were a bit ripped up. Yet he seemed more determined with his posture. Lavender shot another fireball at him. He didn't even think twice that he used to spell the catch in the fire and spin around him. Lavender shot more and more, yet Bartholomew took each one and made his circles brighter. It was to the point where no matter how many times he shot, Bartholomew got it. That's when he controlled the fire and made his appear to the ground. Good, good. You finally learned perfect control and understanding. You showed you aren't limited to what you know, but what you can do. Bartholomew said nothing nor anything to show his resolve. He just seemed determined as Lavender came up to him. I think it's time for your next lesson. Bartholomew nodded as Lavender walked away from him. In distance, he saw a weird kid stand there. He went close to investigate, yet seemed shocked to see who it was. J Jay? Is that you? Though it did look like Jay, the boy refused to turn around. This finally made Bartholomew seem gleeful. Oh, oh my god, it's, it's been so long. Tears were down his face as he went to the poor back hug. I thought I lost you. I've been working so hard to try and save you. But he couldn't see me after he fell an elbow to the gut. Bartholomew staggered back after feeling that. Why did you... No, I know why. I'm sorry I ran away. I should have saved you when I had a chance. But it's okay now. I'll never run again. He gets up back to his legal pose. We'll be together from now on. Nothing will ever stop that. I l He stopped when Jay turned around to him. He was once again shocked to see him, this time with his face completely gone with a purple flame. Bartholomew backed away, stunned. What happened to... He felt Lavender confirm from behind. 
Don't you see? Your mind's playing tricks with you. Lavender gets up closer to Fake Jade. There's no problem with caring about someone, but sometimes your emotions overcloud your logic. The Fake Jade came over and gave a swift blow to stun Bartholomew. You understand what you can do and the control you have with your powers. It's time you do that with your mind. Bartholomew gets up in a defensive stance. The Fake Jade came over from her attack, yet Bartholomew pushed him with a force spell. He didn't, he, he didn't cast a body until to keep him there. That should take care of that. Is that what you think? Bartholomew looks over to see if the fake jade no longer there. That's when he felt a punch in the back of his head. Once again, you made your emotions to the talking instead of your head. I don't get it. Lavender groans, warping his head. Just look around you. Bartholomew does so see fog come cover the entire area. Bartholomew was taken aback after seeing it. Where did any of this come from? He felt more attacks from the quick J. This is your emotion. The thoughts you have about him cause you to be hesitant. One attack after another, Bartholomew felt cast a shield spell to block the attacks. There's a time and place to have these emotions. But when you use black magic, I think you get the idea. The shield just absorbing the blows. This caused him to kill over again as injury was slowly zapped away from him. He was just kneeling killing there as he thoughts raced through him. That's when his shield broke. The fake Jay used his opportunity to go for the final clash. Before it did so, however, Bartholomew let a fierce shriek as the ground shook beneath him. He then quickly cast another spell that caused the fog to separate. Lavern looks out in pot awe as Bartholomew came out in the black veil. Impossible! He went over for a powerful spell that spawned a giant laser from his hand, completely obliterating Jay. You achieved the one of the hardest spells any black mage could ever miss, master. The black veil went away as Bartholomew faced him. Astroth, no other mage I trained ever reached that level of power. How'd you do it? The level pushed back his body dangle in the air. It was less stiff as Bartholomew came closer. Doesn't matter. It's what you want me to be, don't you? Level magic under our fingertips is what you wanted. Lavender struggled to break free as Bartholomew kept him in the air. I understand now. He lets go of Lavender as he looks at his own hands. All this power, all this things can hold myself back. Lavender gets to confront him. Bartholomew faced with another spell ready to go, while Lavender motioned to stop. He then clapped his hands and proudly. Amazing. Purely amazing. See what you can do when you aren't so hesitant? He dusts himself up while, cl while getting closer. I've been practicing black magic for generations. Before, before you even a thought. Yet here you are not only catching me off guard, but overpowering my spell. He didn't hug Savoy happily. This should lead to your next step. Follow me. Lander walked away, expecting Bartholomew to follow. He just stood there. Come. Bartholomew looks at his hands with some resolve. Don't you think I'm ready to go save him? Save all of them? Lavender sighed to think after hearing that. Power-wise, yes. Yet you still need to practice it. Come with me. I can take him to a place where you can learn all that you can. And after that, you'll be more than ready. Bartholomew wastes no time to follow. If you say so. Where are you taking me, though? It was a little longer walk as they passed through a dead forest outside the void. They climbed into a nearby hill. Lavender stopped while pointing his hand out pridefully. Behold, the Black Mage Village. Arthur looked down amazed. He was still disappointed to see it was only a couple wooden shacks. Remember, I said many others are like you in this universe. Yet somehow you have proven to be well above any living in that town. Is that why they haven't gone to save them? Lavender came down while motioning to follow once more. Precisely. At this rate, it's only going to be you. I'm sure you understand it, right? I thought he looked at his hands again. I suppose. Or he's just I trim by myself. Lavender hands him a stick for the ground. That's for you to decide. Grab everything you need from town. This will all come in handy. Bartholomew is confused. A stick? Oh, just tap it. He does so as it turns to a larger purple staff. He looks at it in maze. These trees that grow around here are filled with the spirit of darkness. Those branches are no exception. They should easily help you control and master other spells without going overboard with your magic. I'm, as I mentioned with black magic, it's only limited by you. Outside of that, it couldn't be near, damn near limitless on how it's own. I see. Before I send you off, take this as well. 
Looks back up to see a black bodysuit, a cape, and a purple mask. You must fully embrace your black magic abilities. You are, as you are now a member of darkness. Barthani takes it a little disgusted. This looks uncomfortable. Lavender was annoyed again. It gives you more flexibility as well as hiding your identity to those outside of here. Barthani shrugged as he headed back into the village. Some more time has passed after Barthani's arrival. Some of those other black mages were about to take a break to eat within one of the shacks. So I tell this idiot, right? Now you're doing the spell all wrong. Yet, all he tells me is I'm a dumbass. I've been practicing this shit way longer than he has. Who does he think he is? You aren't referring to Max, are you? Everyone knows that he's a village idiot. Nah, mates, I'm referring to that so-called right-hand man of the Shadow King. Who I believe his name was? The other black mage was in shock. No way, him? You should know better. Now, that's what I'm saying, yet he doesn't listen. Talk about a complete idiot. He didn't stop as he heard the fork creak. They both turned around to see a man that looked like them. Only had a purple helmet. Hope I'm not interrupting anything. Not at all, come in. He does so with some fruit in his hand. He sits down to take off his helmet to reveal an older Bartholomew with longer hair in it. Hey, you're not drawn this dude, aren't you? And then I get being more shrugging. First time in a while I see you. How you been? Just mastering different spells. Nothing out of the ordinary. Right. Do you know about the director? I thought he finishes his bite. This spell, the spell you can get as it changes the direction of your opponent's attack. It's per it's pretty useless spell all together, as there are five others on the top of my head that can easily outclass it. Right. Well, it's worth passing anyway. Tell me, how do you do it? He puts his apple down as he gets up. He didn't cast a fire spell to a boomerang back to him. As he was flying back, he cast the right of a spell by moving his hands in every direction, like a compass. Points to the ground, the fire soon followed as it missed him and hit the ground to the flame out. The other black man just watched with a smile. See, I knew I was doing it right! Never doubt you. I'm more a friend of Ren. Ren? They both they look back to confused Ren following you. The scene sh is shifted to Bartholomew and black other mages with their masks back on, approaching nearby castle. You don't need to get involved. It's just a simple argument. Yeah, besides, you said it yourself. There are better spells out there. No need to cause a scene about one little disagreement. Bartholomew didn't listen as he went to the castle front door. There he sees a man in a black armor along with a red mask covering his head. Holt, state your business. Bartholomew stands there sternly. Right, you know who I am. Yeah, what do you want? He looks back to the other two mages. Oh, you heard about how those idiots keep getting the spells wrong. As opposed to the savant such as yourself, it's annoying. Don't worry, I already took care of the problem. I thought he shakes his head in its approval. In reality, the problem I have here is with you. Rune looks back at him shocked. If there's one thing I came to hate in these past few years, it is that standing outside as the, is that standing aside as the wrong things happen. Even when saying that is as small as this instant earlier. What are you even saying? Do you even hear yourself? Perfectly. What about you? Tell me, tell me those guys the wrong way to do a spell. So what if I did? How does that affect you? Ren felt himself get pushed back to the castle. Because I know what it's like to be at the mercy of someone else. As a right hand man, your job is to teach these people the right way. Don't you want us to be contained by what's out there? Ren gets unamused. You're playing with fire, Daronis. You get to closer. If you really want to say something, meet me at the hill in an hour. Then we can really discuss. I thought he looked up the hill while he, as he was talking about it. He nods sternly. Very well. See you soon. Now we go over to the hill. Ren stood there confidently as the other mages came over to see what was going on. One of the black mages was shouting to everyone else proudly. Come on, come on! For you're about to see two mages get it on. We have Ren taking on the young prodigy Duratus. Make sure you don't miss it. Ren doesn't even pay the other mages a second of his time. He was just, un he was just, he just waits unflinchingly. That's when out of the crowd came Bartholomew, who sat his stats to the ground. Not going to fight me with your proper control, are you? Duratus stands in front of him as his hands glow. Ren was taken aback by this as it looked familiar. That stinks. There's no way he mastered already. I thought he continued to get closer. Come now, show me what makes you the right hand man. I knew it. You were coming from my spot. Just so you know, Lavender and I are close friends. We are the ones who found this village together. There is no way in hell I'm going to dishonor him today. You already have when you ruined his teachings. 
Ren got his own hands together. What do you know about his teachings? He spawns an ice spell that freezes everything beside him. Yeah, but I thought you'd dodge effortlessly. You're just a stupid 17-year-old who lives within your own fantasy. He felt a swift beam hit him from the dark in the armor. He says the one who does doing the same thing. Ranking cast more ma elemental magic. Yet it was to no avail if Bartholomew took each one and kept it beside him. He then tossed them back. Only for Ren to cast his shield and absorb all of it. And so Bartholomew felt sharp strikes hit him from the chest. Really? Using this strategy? Some master you are. Bartholomew gets up slowly. Each day I wonder what he saw in you. Put his foot into the kid's back. Whatever, like everyone else here, you live in the same reality. And that's how you think. That's how you always think. Too predictable. Ren seems silent to hearing that. Predictable? Ren and Fel himself walk backwards. As he was confused about what was happening, as Parthania got back up. He tried to move forward, but yet he just kept going backwards. Idiot. You're too up to your own ass, I didn't realize. What are you even talking about? Nero. The spell doesn't let make your opponent move the exact opposite from what they actually want to do. There's no spell called Nero. Everyone else looked shocked, but I thought he didn't seem faithful to that fact. And there was, there was, was. Just now you decided to use it. There's something else that everyone else refused to use. He didn't get his hand like he was crushing something. That's when, that's his cause ran to flail on the ground in pain. He screamed horror as everyone else was too frozen to do something. I thought he kept going before you heard something from the crowd. Doronis, that's enough! He looked, he saw that as Ren lay on the ground in pain. From the crowd came Lavender, he went over to check up on Ren. He was still alive, yet in an extreme amount of pain. What did you do to him? I thought you of all people would have known. One to defy deadly curses, tortory. He looks around to see everyone looking worryingly. There's only two. How did you find more? He looks back around to see no one trusts him. Seriously, none of you know? How could I be the only one who figured it out? Everyone else looked at each other, each confused. Lavender approaches Mage. He found more spells. He then thought to himself, I knew it. Hejoy does know what he's doing. Darkest, you blessed us with your true successor. It would appear I did. You know you know what this means, don't you? You're ready. The diamond looked at him shocked. Are you serious? You have clearly you cleared any doubt from my mind that you are aren't ready for this little task. He puts his hand on to Dark Ronis's shoulder. Go on, free your friends. And also him. I'm sure he would love to see you again. Everyone else will unclean chair as Lavender shot them all look. I thought he would look back into his own hands. That's when he rushes off to do just that. Lavender waves goodbye before he's out of the sight. That's when he looks back to Rain confidently. He's everything I could have ever possibly dreamed of. <laughs> just as planned. The scene goes away as Darky wakes up from his bed. He reads heavily as he looks at his mask. Oh, it was just a dream. He then picks his mask back up calmly. These past memories continue to haunt me. He grasps it tightly. Did I make the right decision to trust you at the time? This is all just one big mistake. He holds back his motion as he thought comes to him. Hold on. That dream I had did feel strange. He gets up while looking out the window. That dream felt too real. I shouldn't have. I had never had a dream like this before. After I see illusions of him again. That he then comes to a conclusion. Wait a minute. He gets that revelation. Put his mask back on, he stares out sternly. How dare you bring this back to me. Damn you, Morgan. He leaves the room angrily. This leads us back to the Desert Temple with David and the rest. It just came face to face Nemesis to guard the path. I'm not sure what's here why you even here in the first place. But doesn't matter now. You think you have what it takes to beat me? Everyone else got into a defensive stance. I don't know. Do you? Then just smirked as he went into the room for a punch. They all dodge easily. Man, you're slow. This is almost too easy. Then she just smirks back as, he, as his fist lands in the rubble on the ceiling. He then grabs a hold of it to rip away the debris and staircase like it was paper. They all look in shock. Then the system punched the other wall around them, putting them in a purple void after the walls fall down. Gaze upon it. My powerful ability purgatory. Putting you into a space with one person can do anything. He goes over the punch, Sierra, despite her being transparent. She can send flying back. Me. The others got into out the fight as well. Yet David Bow was gone, so was Fury's change. 
What happened to my... You clearly dodge a punch nemesis. It's obvious. He looks around to see Sierra slowly get back up. This void renders our abilities mute. We have to fight him without it. Nemesis it stands in the middle of it proudly. Exactly. Defeated now? I'm unbeatable here. He laughs confidently as everyone else stared at him, unknowingly what to do. Meanwhile, Dark Flame and Anto were further down the hallway in front of a large door. So, this is what's being kept here. Possibly. Don't see anything else around here. With all the shockwave behind them. Ah, they alive. I thought that on Nemesis is still in another tantrum. Probably another tantrum. Though, out of curiosity, what can he do? Dark Flame just looked in concern confidently. Let's just say that his ability is invincible. You can't beat it. And so stares at him weirdly. Yeah, right. But here's the thing. There's no ability like that. Dark Flame rolls his eyes after hearing that. Fine. It isn't necessarily invincible. Once you know the trick of it, you could theoretically beat him. But the trick is hard to figure out. And only a select few such as myself know about it. I bet I know it too. <laughs> Sure. Their plan goes back over to investigate the door. So, what's your beef with them? Eh? Those guys? Not much. They ruined my business years ago and betrayed my trust. That's got to suck. Surprised you even hesitant to help us. And it still looks back down the hallway. Yeah, I'm surprised myself. We go back to the fight taking place as the group struggles to keep out Nemesis. Dragnaw tries to deliver a barrage of punches to the enemy, yet without lighting it fails to get that extra punch. It was tossed aside in pain. People like you rely too much on those things. If they ever if they never existed, they will never stand a chance against anything in this universe. He then fell an attack from Fury, who also did nothing. Nemesis turns back annoyed. Fury just laughed, he tried and calmed him down. Ah, uh, mercy? Nemesis grabs him by the throat. Um no. He tossed Fury away like a ragdoll. Is this the best you guys got? Then the color me impressed. I'm impressed by how shit each one of you is. You're lucky my ability doesn't allow me to do anything else. Someone like Ducky with this ability would have been dead already. He even tried to study his foe the best he could, yet he found no entrance. Damn it, what am I missing? He reads to me, which ends up being a huge mistake as since take notice of him. Oh right, I forgot you. He goes over to dodging David, and he keeps going at him. What the world is all that big talk you had? Well, why are you all quiet now? This is what happens when you underestimate someone. David tried to avoid, but he was constantly on the back foot as the barrage of punches flew in front of him. He eventually stopped running and went for his own punch instead. He, he hits him straight in the gut, which did nothing to net. That's nothing. But that the Nemesis breaks his arm with one strong punch to the elbow. It gives a huge cracking noise with David screaming in pain. He backed away as his blood goes out of it. Too easy. David looks back in pain as he heard someone behind him. Never fear, Dragonel is here to save you. He finds the to the nemesis while punching him slowly across the face. He causes the brick house to strike her in pain. He hear while rubbing his chin. Dragonel stands behind him confidently. Not the bad. Maybe you might have some bite after all. Dragonel pulls his fist at the attack. Fury soon came by his side. Believe us, we still have plenty of juice left. Right, Sierra? Nemesis looks over to see nothing. That is until he fell shoved from behind. You got that right. She knocks him over as she goes with the others. They all stand in the protective order as David watches in awe. He kept only his arm in pain. Nemesis gets back up angrily. So that's how it's going to be. Fine. He beats his chest privately. Come at me! They charge at him as he did the same. David just stands there as his arms throbs in pain. Seem to do a fine no job without me. Looks down on each side, goes blow for blow. Together. They seem to work well they seem to work off rather well. It's almost like they completely trust who they are in that situation. You want to use that to hearing that. They trust who they are. He looked to see Fury punch Nemesis in the gut. Before Nemesis did anything, he saw Fury confidently smirk at Dragono, who punched him in the head by gag again. Nemesis screams angrily as she tries to get both, but failed to do so as Sierra gave him another shove to the gut. Nice work, H! Is that my new nickname? Fury shrugged. We can figure that out after we beat him. Nemesis once again charges at them. Just like the true squad, they understand to keep them alive. Reminds me a lot of my beggar game. 
You're interested in that thought. Exactly. And that's it. He yet again recalled the conversation he had with Mikey. Do I see them as what people help my, helping or are my friends? They clearly see each other that way. They keep protecting each other and working to beat Nemesis. I get it now. He gets up slowly to see him. He takes his only good hand and puts it out confidently. Alright, let's time to get back in action. For you, Mikey, I'll show you what my answer is. He goes in to give a swift blow to the head. Now we go back to Dark Flame and Anso opens open the door. By the way, couldn't I trust you, right? What do you mean? Dark Flame takes a deep breath. I am going to be a part of this game. I might as well tell you his ability's weakness. You'll see. Though he can take any take away yours, it doesn't enhance him in any way possible. In fact, if he would happen to have faced more than one foe, despite the debuff, he still would struggle a lot. That's why Chuck and I always meant to get the upper hand. He hates how people rely on abilities too much, yet he never realize how he does the same. Outside of physicality, he never improves in any other way. Thus, if you know that, he's easy to beat. And so nods and understanding as they're hearing that. I see. Yet, another reason I'm telling you this is because I believe that group has figured it out. I know he's stupid enough to have all of them in this void. In time, he will fall, leaving you and I to stop them. Is that so? You think you can beat them? And so sees Dark Plane leave a trail of plays behind him. Guess time will tell. Try to slow them down as best you can. I'll keep going ahead. Yanto looks at him sternly as Dark Lane grows deeper. Back to the fight, Nemesis was now struggling to keep up with them. Fury and Dragonel kept working off each other until Nemesis was backed up to a point where he couldn't keep his balance. So he had to win for her own attack, only to fake out with Deepa giving a, slope, giving a blow drift to his face. With it, the void went away as Nemesis fell hard on the ground. He was stunned as he was laid by the rebel and caught what he caused. Everyone cheered with this victory. Another one of the record books! We showed that me head what's for! Here he laughed at it along with them. Hey, how about next time you don't go into a 4-in-1, dumbass? Sierra laughed herself, though for a different reason. How immature can you guys be? He is still sinking feet conflicted as he held his arm, broken arm. Walking forward, he sees Nemesis lay there in the feet. Checking to see if I have a pulse? Nah, I'm more curious about what you're going to do next. And this doesn't even get up while he lays in there in shock. He even gets a teleport away by Thierry. Whatever it is, it ain't happening here. David gave his own coffin, gave his own laugh before he ain't in pain. The others looked at him concerned. Oh yeah, the broken arm. David leads the back, leads a pack like nothing is happening. It's just one arm. Let's keep going. I think you should really sit back. David looks back at them like they are stupid. Nonsense. I'll keep going. Rips the bottom of his jacket and wraps it around it with the other front hand. See, no worries. This didn't ease the conscience of everyone there. Yep, like nothing's wrong with it. They all gave shocked looks as they saw Anto stand there sternly. What up, losers? Where's the rest of your merry band? Fury and Dragon came around for the fence. When, when'd you like to know? Do you want to sell this here or later? Anto just walks beside them as he heads the stairs. Relax, dipshits. I'm not going to attack you. He then brings out a gun to blow away the breed blocking the path. I had enough action as it is. Besides, I already know you're going to beat the flame guy. I assume he's by the circle thing. And then Nazi heads the steps. You dragged me all the way here when I no longer wanted anything to do with this. I was thinking about getting that bounty, but after a while I got tired of thinking about it. He waves back as he walks upstairs. Don't be surprised if this is the last if this is the last time you see me. Because I had it with all this. I don't want to kill you anymore, but I also don't want anything to do with you. The all understanding. Antonin goes all the way up. That's when they all look down the hallway for their final goal.